We now to the last section of our functions, and it's been quite um, thorough in what the value of A in our equation has been. But unfortunately, it's not limited to only a value in front of our graph. We have to keep on questioning. That's what maths is all about. We're not satisfied with just answering one question, what if. We now want to say, what if we actually add a Q, another variable now called Q, okay, don't let that frighten you, but now we want to say, what happens if we take the graph that we're comfortable with and we add on Q, or the cos graph and add on Q, the tan graph, add Q, the parabola, add on a Q, the hyperbola, add on a Q, and the exponential add on a Q. So what if it wasn't just the same one single term, but we now have something added on the back? And of course, I know that if I'm working with Q as a variable, then I have to actually have a look at the case when Q could be positive or the case when Q could be negative. And so let's move on into that and we're going to clarify this by looking at some examples. And now you are going to be working with me and we're looking at the top of page 129 in your workbook. All right, and it says, study the graphs given below. Y is equal to sine X minus 2 and Y is equal to sine X. Now let's have a look if we recognize anything here. Well, first of all, I recognize that that is just my plain, simple, predictable y equals sine x. Notice that the value in front there is a 1, and so I'm going to pick up that this one here is going from 0, 0, peaks at 91, and it comes down through 180, 0. Notice that the graphs themselves are only drawn from 180 down to minus 180 and slightly beyond. They haven't given me the full snapshot all the way to 360 or all the way to minus 360 because that's unnecessary. So this guy is our normal and dare I say boring sine x because nothing's happened to it. But let's take this equation and see how it actually models itself according to that equation. So it was a sine x. The number in front of the sine x is still a 1. But now what has happened is that a value has actually been added on. And in this case, the q value is a minus 2. And remember I said that the value that gets added on could be positive or it could be negative. Now what I want you to see, and again it's an intuitive thing by inspection, let us have a look at this point which was at 0, 0, and it has been moved down to 0, minus 2. So this transformation that's happened is moved down two units. Now let's see if that has happened with any of the other points. This point here is 91. This point finally is 90 minus 1. So I'm going to actually not insult your intelligence by saying, can you see down to, down to. So what is our remarkable effect of this Minus 2 being tacked on to the end? Well, all that's happened is that the graph has actually moved down by 2 units. Now, can you see that that is a vertical move? It hasn't moved it left or right, so it hasn't shifted it at all. Nought is still in line with that nought. 90 is still in line. It hasn't shifted it left or right. But what it's done is it's just shifted it down. 
Now, what other effects has it had? Well, has it affected the period of the graph? All right, well, I think that you can see that it was taking 360 degrees to finish a pattern, and our period is still 360, so it's unchanged in this new graph. Okay? But what has changed is very definitely the range. So let's look at that. So for our original graph, can you see that our graph was wedged between minus 1 and 1? So for our normal graph sine x, our range would be between minus 1 and 1. Now, if we're taking sine x and we are subtracting 2 from all of the values, what do you think our range is going to be? Well, minus 1 subtract 2 and 1 subtract 2 seems like the way to go for me, so let's have a look. I'm saying that the new graph will span between minus 3 and minus 1. Let's go and check. All right. I said that it was going to force, be forced to lie between minus 3 and minus 1. And can you see that that is actually true? So our period is unchanged. Our range has changed because it's moved up or down the y-axis. The other thing that we need to have a look at is, has the amplitude changed? So amplitude and if you recall, the amplitude for sine x was 1. And the way that I explained that is I said it spanned two units. And so the height of an up bump had to be half of that, which is 1. Now let's have a look at for sine x minus 2. How much does this span? Well, it still spans two units. It's exactly the same graph. It hasn't been stretched at all, so the amplitude hasn't changed. All that's happened is that the graph has moved down. So our amplitude here stays 1. So shifting it down or up doesn't change the height of the graph or the amplitude. All it does is that the range is changed. All right, so let's see if we can take that knowledge and move it into what happens with a cos graph if we add or subtract a piece on or off. And now I'm working with you on page 129, right at the bottom. All right, and it says the graphs of y equal minus cos x. So let's just quickly take a snapshot at our set of axes down the bottom here and see which one is minus cos x. Well, remember, normal cos x started at 1, came down at 90, and then came down at 180. So this graph here, because it's negative, it's been reflected across the x-axis. Okay, so what I've now traced out here is very definitely, from our previous experience, y equals minus cos x. Now they tell us that another graph is sketched and it has got the equation minus cos x plus 1. And they're telling me that this could also be written as 1 minus cos x. Now that's just a remark. So we've got y equals minus cos x plus 1. And they're telling me that it could be reordered in 1 minus cos x. So they're just saying, look at these, they are the same. But for me, I think that you can see that the one I prefer is this guy here, because it actually shows me quite clearly that it was the original one of minus cos x, and then I can see that the change that has been affected is that they want me to add 1. So I'm looking at this and saying, all right, I had a minus cos x graph. They want me to affect a change of add 1, all right, which is actually telling me that my q value is a 
plus 1 and can you see that in effect what is going to happen is that each of these values on the normal graph, the minus cos x graph, I need to add 1. So I physically take this and move it up 1. I take this value and I move it up 1. Likewise, I move 1. Of course I could have taken ones in between, but these are the ones that are the most important because they will give me the general shape of my graph. And in joining those points, I now have the transformed graph, which is y equals minus cos x, add 1. What comment do we need to make? I'm sure you're getting good at this. Do we know the period of our new graph? Well, I think that you can see that the period is still going to be 360 degrees. Nothing's changed. Right? That's the first comment. Secondly, what is my range of the new graph? Well, I just have to look at the spanning, and can you see that it spans from zero, the lowest that it goes down to is zero, the highest that it goes up to is two. So my range would be from zero up to two. My third point is my amplitude of this graph. And again, the quickest way to get amplitude is to say, well, this spans two units. So a down bump must have had a maximum of height 1. And can you see that an up bump has also got a maximum of height 1 if we were to be looking as this, as our new axis, it's been moved up 1. So a down bump is 1 unit and an up bump is 1 unit as well. So our amplitude would be one unit. See if you can draw the second graph on each of the axes given below. So it says, can we draw the graph of 2 sine x minus 1? Well, at the moment, the graph that's here already is 2 sine x. Right? That's that one. Now we just want to say, what effect does the minus 1 have? Well, we know that all of the y values are going to be dropped down by 1. So I'm literally going to take that point, drop it 1. Drop it 1. All right, I'm going to drop it 1. All right, and I don't have to do too many because I can see that what I can now do is I'm going to actually just join those up. And again, I urge you to try and use a steady hand as possible. All right, <laughs> which wasn't the case with me. All right, and so joining them up. All right, I have now got the graph of 2 sine x minus 1. The original graph dropped down by one unit. Okay, guys, we move on to the next example. And please could I ask you to just write in that the equation for this example is y equals tan x plus 1 because that is, that is what is missing. They want me to draw y equals tan x plus 1. So notice I've got the graph of tan x drawn. So I cleverly have to just say, what effect is this plus 1 going to have? And it's definitely going to move all the important points up by one unit. So if I take the 0, which is at the moment at 0, 0, I'm going to move that to 0 with 1. 45 is mapped with 1 at the moment. I'm going to map it with 2. And that's actually enough for me to say that that's what's going to happen to my graph. It's literally going to be moved up by 1 unit. Likewise, at the moment, this is at 0, 0. It's going to move to 0 with 1. Here it's at 135 with minus 1. So it's going to become 135 with 0. And again, I'm going to draw that in. And you can see it's the identical graph, but it's just been hoisted up by one unit. So without too much explanation, we can see that what's going to happen here is 0 will move to 1, 1 will move to 2, 
And so this piece would come in here. So what is the effect of the plus one? It takes our graph and it just shifts it up by one unit. Okay, so moving on to page 131. This is how teachers actually confuse you because they just keep on changing what's asked. This is a lovely way of giving you the picture and then saying, so what must Q have been? So the graph of Y equals a half X squared plus Q is sketched. Write down the value of Q. Now write is just that. We must be able to look at it and say, aha, Q is. So it is definitely a parabola. But can you see that our normal parabola that we're comfortable with is a happy chap sitting in here somewhere. All right? This one has actually been dragged downwards, and according to my picture, it's been dragged down by three units. So that means that I can quickly just say that the Q value must have been minus 3, and so in fact, my Y equation must have been a half X squared minus 3. Our normal half X squared parabola dropped down by three units. Right, a similar example, number two on the same page. So yes, we're still on page 131. Reads as follows. The graph of Y equals two times three to the X plus Q is sketched. Write down the value of Q as well as the equation of the asymptote. All right, so write down the value of Q. So that is saying by how much has the graph been lifted up or down and also the equation of the asymptote. Now I'm going to do the asymptote first because it's easier. So picking up from the graph, can you see that this dotted line or the barrier line is actually along the line where y equals minus 2? All right, so that means that my asymptote all right, has the equation y equals minus 2. Now I need to have a look at what value of Q would I have to have added on or subtracted off here so that it resulted in the graph that I have in the picture above. Now my equation of my graph is y is equal to 2 times 3 to the x plus Q. Okay, so guys, we've looked at the asymptote. Now we want to have a look at the value of Q, which would allow this graph to drop from where it normally was down to where it is at the moment. Now, I want us just to have a look at Y equals 2 times plain simple 3 to the X. Now, if I let X be 0 in that, I think you can see that my Y value would be a 2. So the ordinary graph, the one that was there before I shifted it, would have looked something like that. However, this graph has actually been dropped down, and if you have a look in your book, that goes through a y value of minus 1. So in order to affect a change of from 2 to minus 1, it means that my new equation is going to actually have to drop down by 3 units, and so we're going to have to have our new equation to be 2 times 3 to the x minus Three. And I'm so sorry to have to point this out to you again, that you just need to quickly turn to page 132, and the solutions for number 2 actually tell you that Q is a negative 2. All right, we don't want you to get confused. We want you to say, no, that's incorrect. We want you just to write the Q there is it's been dropped down three units, which it definitely has done according to our picture, to make our picture correct, we've had to drop it down by three units. Okay, guys, the next question, question three, is actually introduced on the bottom of page 131, and then it continues on page 132, but it says, the graph of y equals 12 over x plus q is sketched, and what we want to do is write down the value of q as well as the equations of the asymptotes. So, focusing on what we have here, can you see that what we've got is definitely a positive hyperbola, first and third, but it's definitely been moved somehow. And you can see that where before it was lying with an asymptote here, 
this asymptote has now been moved and we can see quite quickly that the asymptote is going to be lifted up by four units. So can you write down the value of Q with me as easily as I can? So Q is going to be four. So in fact, my equation is 12 over X add four. And now it says, what is the equation of the asymptotes? Well, my new asymptote here is very definitely going to just be replaced with the equation of y equals 4. But this asymptote hasn't changed. My graph hasn't moved left or right. And so my other asymptote is still going to be the same old one as the parent graph would have been x equals 0. So in conclusion, if we have a hyperbola of the form y equals a over x plus q, as you've just seen in the previous example, you can see that the vertical asymptote stays the same, but the horizontal asymptote changes and just takes on the value that you moved it up or down. So if I have an exponential graph of the form y equals a b to the power of x plus q, then how does that affect things? Well, it's now going to have an asymptote with the equation y equals q.